just work. No. Oh, come on. About a year ago, I picked up a camera and started filming all of the little changes I was making to my home office. And I called the project Work From Hype because the goal was always to make my workspace more exciting and more enjoyable to use. But over the past year, not every upgrade I've made was a success, but I've never made a video about them. As a creator, I guess I find it easy to make videos about the good stuff. The desk gadgets that I enjoyed using, the accessories that instantly improved my workspace. So today, I want to change that. I want to step outside of my comfort zone and share some of the bad stuff. The failed experiments, the desk gadgets and accessories that I regret buying. And hopefully by the end of this video, I can save a few of you from making the same mistakes that I did. I want you to look at this keyboard. Look carefully, tell me if you can see anything wrong with this picture. This is my 60% keyboard. And if you've never heard of a device like this, a 60% keyboard is a keyboard that lacks the number pad, the F keys, and the arrow keys. But why? Well, because I wanted that clean and minimal aesthetic. I even added some custom keycaps, and I was really happy with how this thing looked. And I tried. I really tried to love using this keyboard, but my brain could not adapt to the 60% layout. I was so caught up in chasing that clean aesthetic that I forgot how often I needed those arrow keys when I'm writing a script at my desk. Now that said, there's nothing wrong with this specific model. The Ann Pro 2 is solid. And you may really enjoy the 60% layout. However, I should have realized my giant hands were never meant to type on something this small. A very quiet microphone. This is the Shure MV7. And it's the microphone that I use for YouTube and just about everything else. And it's one of my more expensive regrets. It has two outputs, a traditional XLR and a USB. This was important to me because sometimes I record away from my desk. Sometimes I just have a mic and a laptop and I want to be able to just plug in the microphone and start recording. Unfortunately, the USB output on the MV7 is just way, way too quiet. I tested different USB cables I updated the drivers on the microphone, but no matter what I did, the recordings over USB on the MV7 were just too quiet, and I had to do a ton of post-processing to make them usable. And that's a bummer, because this microphone sounds great over the XLR cable, but the USB signal is just too weak to be acceptable for a mic that costs close to $200. Quick, I need to make a label for this box. And I have two options, a Bluetooth mini printer and a Sharpie and a piece of tape. But which option is faster? Yes, the, the Sharpie, the, the Sharpie wins. And now you know why this mini Bluetooth printer is another one of my desk gadget regrets. You connect this printer to your phone and it prints out tiny pieces of paper that you can use as tags or labels and it works. But I regret purchasing this thing because connecting your phone to the printer takes some time. And then you need to open the app and then you need to check the paper and finally you can print something. Look, I'm not an organized person. If I don't label something immediately, there's a high probability I lose it forever. And so while I love the idea of this mini printer, I've reverted back to the good old fashioned method Method of Sharpie and tape for office organization. My next regret is, well, it's not here. I couldn't place it in this shot because it's permanently attached to my desk. I'd like to reintroduce you to my desk mounted macro pad. Last year, I made a video where I tested one of the smallest macro pads you can get on Amazon, and then I attached it to the front of my desk. The idea was to use this macro pad to control all of the smart lights in my office, and it worked. It was easily accessible, it controlled all the lights, the mechanical keys were satisfying to click, and I think it looked 
looked pretty cool on the front of my desk. But at a certain point, I started to hate that I could not adjust the lights when my computer was turned off. And then I installed a motion sensor by the door of my office, which automatically turns the lights on when I come into my office, and it turns the lights off when the motion sensor has detected that I've left the room. In other words, this simple motion sensor by my door was a far better solution than my desk mounted macro pad. And now I regret mounting this thing with super glue because I'm pretty sure this thing is not coming off the desk without a fight. My final regret of the video, oh, hold on a second, let me just, let me just grab a light, let me just turn on a light just a second, okay, uh, hold on, sorry, connecting, hold on, okay, okay, there we go. Yes, my final regret was buying these Elgato key lights. I was a new content creator and I needed lights for filming videos, but I really had no idea what I was looking for. All I knew is that the key lights from Elgato were popular and I saw tons of streamers and other YouTubers using them, so I bought a pair. And yes, if you're a Twitch streamer or you just need a simple light for your Zoom calls, the key lights do the job. But the problem is, that's not me. When I make videos, I move around my office constantly. I film from multiple angles and the Elgato lights are just not the right tool for the job. There are no physical controls on the lights. Anytime I need to adjust the brightness of the lights, I have to turn on my computer or phone, connect to the light, and make the adjustment. And when you're moving around and filming, not having those physical controls gets old fast. Now in fairness, that part's on me. I should have done a bit more research and realized that live streaming lights are not the same thing as professional video lights. But it's not all on me. Part of my frustration is the software. Elgato Control Center was painful for me to use. My lights would just disappear from the app and I'd have to factory reset them over and over to sync with the app. I want to mention that these are early model key lights, so these problems have hopefully been fixed for newer models. And I should probably mention I am a big fan of some of Elgato's other products, but I've learned my lesson. And recently I picked up a more flexible lighting system that makes so much more sense for a content creator like myself. And that's the video. These were the desk gadgets and devices that I regret purchasing. I'm glad I went back to face these failures head on because it makes me appreciate the successful projects that much more. If you're interested in some desk gadgets that I have zero regrets with, you should check out some of my latest additions to the setup. As always, thanks for watching Work From Hype, and I'll see you all in the next one.